Hello guys. Uh, yeah, uh, I think this is the final presentation for the today, uh, for the first uh, first day of Ruby conference, and yeah, it will be quick hopefully. And this is about parallel processing with Ruby, and yes, actually yesterday night I came here from Singapore, and I forgot my lap uh, laptop charger to take, so. My laptop is running out of battery right now. <laughs> uh, if it died quickly, you can go home quickly. <laughs> so, yeah. And yes, I'm Dilum Nawanchana, and this is my first time in Malaysia and Kuala Lumpur, even though I worked in uh, Singapore. And I'm from Sri Lanka, actually. Uh, my motherland, and it's a small island in South Asia. If you have ever heard or else ever visited, yes, that's my country. And in Sri Lanka, we have nice beaches, we have elephants, and we have tea plantations, and we drink tea a lot. Yes. And I'm working in the company called B bytes in Singapore. Yes, we are working with Ruby, and we have some products uh, which are running with Ruby and Grapes. So, because of the reason we are using Grape is uh, actually we are providing some APIs for the front ends. So, because of that, we prefer to use Grape than Rails. But of course, we are using Active Record, Action Mailer, those kind of things. Uh, with the Grape API support. Uh, actually, which helped us a lot right now uh, to give API layer for our front-end developers. And as well as the final thing, we are working with blockchains. Something interesting. And actually, after coming to Singapore, I started learning about blockchains. And it's, we are developing some things with Ethereum and as well as for our transactions, uh, to secure our transactions, we are having a private blockchain uh, which has about 10 nodes. So, yeah, we are doing some developments with blockchains like that. And also, we are hiring. If any of you are familiar with Ruby, Grape, I know all of you are familiar with Ruby. And if you have any plans to move to Singapore, yes, we are hiring. And as well as if any of you are family with blockchains, yes, we will definitely hire you. And yes, this is the topic. Actually, the topic is about parallel processing with Ruby. And even though the topic is about parallel processing with Ruby, it will contain parallel processing and concurrency. So I'm going to talk about parallel processing and concurrency, how it handles in Ruby versions. Uh, Actually, uh, and yes, first of all, before going into the deep, this is the difference between parallel processing and concurrency for the people, for the developers who don't know, actually, who forgot after uh, graduating from school. So <clears throat> from parallel processing, we can have multiple threads uh, as this diagram, and two or more threads can be processed parallelly in parallel processing. But in concurrency without parallelism, we can have multiple threads, two or more, without any problem. But there will be a context switching happening, uh, which will allow only one thread to execute at a given time. So Ruby MRI supports concurrency, not parallel uh, processing. and. Yes, uh, so most of our applications uh, looks like this uh, because of uh, concurrency. Not actually concurrency, but we are using only one CPU, but we have 16 cores, and 15 of them are in idle state. Yeah. So. I know most of you are familiar with Ruby GIL and how it works. 
And for the people who don't know RubyGL, RubyGL is Ruby Global Interpreter Lock, which is in Ruby MRI, and which actually handles the concurrency system in Ruby MRI. So these are the versions, most famous versions in Ruby. And if you can see, Ruby MRI 1.8 and 1.9 so on supports only concurrency, but JRuby, RBX, uh, those kind of things supports concurrency and parallelism, parallel processing. So you may have might think like, why don't we use JRuby for the faster performance? But actually, it's not the case uh, to use JRuby for the faster. But you have to make sure you are safe within the code that you are writing, because you have to be very careful with shared mutable data if you are doing parallel processing with JRuby or uh, a Ruby implementation which supports parallel processing. So this is the this is simple architecture how Ruby, MRI, and JRuby, those kind of things differs. So in Ruby MRI, we have green threads. Actually, we have threads. And before going to the Ruby interpreter, we have GIL layer, global interpreter, which handles our concurrency layer, and which only allows only one thread to access the Ruby interpreter, and then the OS thread, and then the kernel. But JRuby doesn't have anything like GIL. It directly connects from green thread to JVM and OS threads. So I found this nice little text according to the internet, how GI people think about GIL. And yes, this is it. So I'm going to use this bad code actually to demonstrate how we can, uh, how GIL works and how JRuby works with uh, multiple threads. So we have an empty array, and we are going to create five threads. And each thread is going to push nil object 1,000 times to this array. And actually, technically, the final answer of array dot size should be 5,000, because we have five threads, and we are going to push 1,000 objects from each thread. But Actually, this is the answer that we are getting. From Ruby MRI, we get 5,000. That's the correct answer. But with JRuby and the uh, Ruby implementations which support parallel processing, actually, they comes to close to 5,000, but not exactly 5,000. That means the answer is incorrect. So <clears throat> this is happening actually because of the parallel processing. And we are using shared mutable data here, this array, that, uh, which can be edited by multiple threads. And because of that, JRuby with parallelly uh, multiple threads actually pushing this, this, that nil object to that array. Because of that, that's something happening. And I would like to take you into the Ruby MRI code, which actually push uh, objects to Ruby array. So this is the implementation right now. And if you can see, uh, in line 925, we are getting the length, first of all, length of the array called IDX. And then we are pushing the object. And then by 930 line, we actually increment the IDX value by 1. That means uh, we are setting the array length uh, to plus 1, and we are re returning the array. So this is the code. Uh, this is the actual implementation by C. And there can be scenarios uh, that I am going to show you right now, which can be happened, but it will not happen every time. But there's a possibility like this can be happen. So this is the Ruby MRI version. And there's a thread 1. First of all, when we start the 
uh, that process, there will be thread one and the IDX value will be zero because there's no uh, length for that. And we comes to 930 line and we are having a context switching here. So we are going to move into thread two. Actually here, before executing this 930 line, this execution, uh, this context switching is happening in this example. And in thread two, it doesn't know anything about thread one that, uh, that is going to execute this 930 because before executing this 930, that context switching happens. And the IDX value in thread two is still zero. And we are executing the full method correctly in nine, uh, thread two without any context switching. And then the context switching happened here in the thread two and we are passing it to thread one again. So thread one doesn't know that thread two actually increment the IDX value by one. And the only thing thread one knows is IDX value is zero. So he also, the thread one also do is, he increment the value by one and still it's, the array length will be one. So which is incorrect. Two threads actually push the two objects to array, but the length is still one. So, but here, actually this is the Ruby MRI uh, code, but we are getting the correct value 5004 Ruby implementation, Ruby MRI implementation. How that can happen? So that can happen is uh, we have timing threads in Ruby MRI which handles these kind of scenarios. Actually, that means it will not allow context switching to happen yeah, when they are executing this line of code. So because of that, we are safe enough inside Ruby MRI in these kind of situations. That's why we are getting Ru uh, 5,000, that, that means the correct answer in Ruby MRI implementation. So yes, to get, ro get rid of that bad code, we have a solution. If, we, if you still want to use that bad implementation, and if you don't want to get rid of that, yes, we can have mutex. Mutex will work like a, a lock inside your code, and the place that you want to lock uh, by executing, you can actually put it inside a mutex synchronized block. So this 100 times block will only be executing one thread only at a time. So because of that, you are safe, even though with Ruby MRI or else JRuby, the correct results you are getting. And yes, you are good to go. And if you are actually interested enough to s go through the code of JRuby, here's the JRuby actually array append uh, code you can go through and Actually, it's most likely it's similar. And yes, you can go through and check what they are doing and yes, what's their implementation. So the question is, are you safe with Ruby MRI? Actually, the question uh, that can be even though you are using Ruby MRI, and even though you are using MRI with these kind of uh, bad uh, implementations, Ruby uh, MRI implementation inside, it will be thread safe. But the things that you are doing with shared mutable data that can actually <coughs> take you to some bad data implementations and wrong implementations of uh, data. So <coughs> because of that, you have to make sure when you are using shared mutable data in your systems. So you have to make sure that you are using it correctly without any uh, 
without giving multiple threads to access uh, shared mutable data and giving uh, multiple threads to actually edit shared mutable data at once. And if you want to do something like that, then use mutex uh, kind of locks, those kind of things. And yes, as everyone talks about this, Ruby 3, actually, uh, there's a proposal with Ruby 3, which is going to happen. Actually, I don't know when Ruby 3 will uh, release, but there, there's a proposal called Guild, which is going to replace the Ruby global interpreter lock inside Ruby MRI with this uh, Guild implementation. So the Ruby code team developer, Kochi, uh, he has done some talks about uh, this guild implementation that they are going to actually implement, but still they haven't Im started implementing it. Uh, implementing it. So the guild implementation is something like this. So there can be multiple guilds in a program, and inside a guild there can be multiple threads. And when we are executing guilds inside a guild, there will be concurrency, but that means uh, guild one, inside the guild one, T1 and T2 will process concurrently, and T2 doesn't care anything about, uh, actually G, G2 doesn't uh, care anything about G1, what they are doing, uh, and because of that, G2 can execute parallelly among, uh, with G1. So, Hopefully, uh, this will improve the process. And as Ruby 3 uh, proposal, which three times faster th than Ruby 2, so this will be a really good implementation. And yes, actually, I contacted uh, Kochi a few weeks back, and I asked about this implementation and any progress about this, but they are <coughs> understanding is like the, they started implementing uh, actually they started uh, fine tuning their fiber implementations uh, implementation in ruby mri which will support uh, guild later and they haven't uh, start implementing guild yet so we actually we still have several years to go and because I talked about fiber, so fiber was thread. This is the actual difference between fibers and thread. Fibers can do the things that thread's doing, but it's lightweight and it initializes quickly than threads and it actually destroy quickly than threads. So on top of this fiber layer, there are several uh, actually gems that uh, people have developed. One is celluloid, which I was working previously uh, in 2014 when I was uh, actually when I was in college. I got a chance to work with celluloid. Celluloid, any of you have heard about and working with celluloid? Yeah. So the idea of celluloid is everything inside celluloid is considered as actors. So ev any uh, process or else any thread that we are starting or else any execution that we are doing is considered as uh, an actor inside celluloid. And those actors can communicate with each other using mailbox. So that means uh, uh, something like passing messages in between them. So this is the basic implementation, uh, basic idea of celluloid, uh, which is inspired from Erlang, those kind of languages, and how they implement their actor models. So which actually is pretty cool. If you have any time, you can just uh, go and check celluloid. And yes, we are welcoming contributors, so yes. And yeah, so that's it for the presentation. And any questions?
Any questions for Dylan on celluloid and the actor model? Come on, if we don't have three questions, nobody's going home. That's it, final. Uh, thanks for the talk. I was just wondering, would you be able to uh, point out any sort of places in common types of applications we build where utilizing either parallelism or concurrency could be a useful thing to do? Okay. Uh, you mean any web applications, is it? Just in any of, the, any of the sort of apps that people here might be building in their day-to-day mm -hmm. -day lives, what kind, of, uh, what kind of jobs within these apps would uh, adopting a, an approach like parallelism or concurrency um, be a useful area? Mm. So most probably it will be because uh, Ruby doesn't support actually with uh, much support with data processing right now, which goes to Python always. So if we can create a really good layer with uh, this kind of guild implementation, and there will be with, uh, with some of uh, really good libraries on top of that. So we can use them for data processing right now, what we are not doing, we are, uh, yes, those kind of things. So it will be a new age for Ruby, as I think, which we are still using for web kind of things. So yeah, thanks. T minus two, <laughs> holding the room hostage. Uh, Alex, you could be our savior, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, a round of applause for all of Alex's questions. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I have a question. Not sure if you have an answer. Uh, recently, like not really recently, in April, Mike Perham he released the new version of Sidekick. Uh, previously, he used the celluloid for yeah. internal implementation, <laughs> but now he rewrite everything in his own implementation of yeah. the power of the concurrency. Do you know the reasons why and uh, any insights on that? Yeah, earlier, I think two years back, uh, Sidekick used cel uh, celluloid as their uh, concurrency model. And actually, I think as celluloid goes Actually, Sidekick goes bigger and bigger. They wanted to implement their own, and they uh, wanted to get rid of celluloid. That means uh, they wanted to get rid of uh, de depend dependency layer that they are using, and also with the active uh, actor model that we are we are using inside celluloid, uh, they wanted to get rid of that. So that's why Sidekick uh, implemented their own layer of uh, concurrency they are with they are using. Yeah. And did that make you sad? Yeah. Third question. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> Round of applause.